taking down two number one seeds in three days. Melo's 14 dimes set his career high in single game assists and the internal development in Charlotte's organization of Ball and Miles Bridges has the Hornets' hair on fire right now. Buzz City's won four straight and currently number five in the East. That included handing the team with the number one record in the NBA, the seemingly unbeatable Golden State Warriors, one of their two L's, and they took a dub against the steaming Wizards last night. Here's why the Charlotte Hornets resemble a legit playoff team in 2022. Before continuing, only 23.3% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference, and stay tuned for the commenter shoutout giveaway competition at the end. We'll get to the free agency acquisition of the Tsunami Poppy Kelly Oubre Jr. along with Mason Plumley the development of Ball and Bridges, in addition to solid veteran pieces like Gordon Hayward and the team's secret weapon in Cody Martin. But we have to lead off with Scary Terry, who led Charlotte in scoring last season, the man's rounding into form after struggling to begin this season. Rogier has also missed five games with injury, but against the seemingly unbeatable Warriors, Rogier stepped up. Lamelo knocked down four first quarter three pointers and a little Dirk fadeaway as a part of a 15 point opening quarter, but it was a back and forth, hard fought defensive game all throughout. The Hornets needed their most talented one on one shot creator to find a rhythm, and he did just that, as Terry Rogier scored all 20 of his points in the second half. The Hornets held the Warriors to just 14 fourth quarter points and played very sturdy defense all game long. This Hornets team only ranks number 24 in defensive rating among teams, so to see them scrap out a win like that, given how they usually beat teams is with their offense, proves that they're ready to get back to the postseason, especially given they were up against the rolling dubs who are currently number one in defensive efficiency and number three among all teams offensively, not to mention they have the best record in the league. On defense, Rogier, Cody Martin, Lamelo, and James Borrego's sound game planning held the current MVP favorite to just 7 for 22 shooting, albeit on a rare off night for Curry. In their next game against another number one seed, this time the Eastern Conference's top seed, this double block to end the third quarter against the Wizards just fully shows off the all-out hustle that every member of the Hornets is laying out on the line right now. Cody Martin's a mobile two-way shooting guard with a 6'10 wingspan who's averaging a career high in scoring. He's playing without his twin brother for the first time in his life as Caleb Martin signed with the Miami Heat. Cody's quietly been Charlotte's X-Factor in 21-22. Man doesn't get the credit like Charlotte's top contributors, but Cody's third on the team in steals per game behind Bridges and Ball. Speaking of those two, now we're going to dive into a breakdown on the Hornets' top two options. The best part about the Mello and Miles duo is that they can play both ends of the floor with their quickness and athleticism. What makes the combination so tough to stop is that Bridges is scarily taking a career high by far, seven threes per night, and knocking down a somewhat decent 33% of them, but volume spaces out the defense almost just as much as efficiency does. So the fact that Bridges is taking that many triples opens up everything for Lamelo. Taking into account the fact that Miles can poster anyone with his ball handling size and vertical, now that he's made deep range shooting a main facet to his offensive repertoire, that makes this man damn tough to stop. Combine that with Melo's extremely talented, potentially generationally great passing vision, and the Hornets' offense ain't a walk in the park to stop either. Melo's also taking a career most seven threes per game, but unlike Bridges, he's shooting a career high from downtown. But it's of course Ball's setting of the pace and pristine ability to get his teammates involved that's setting the NBA universe ablaze right now. Give credit to Tsunami, Hayward, and Scary T for knocking down their jumpers, but the way Melo whips easy to catch bullets right in the palms of his teammates' hands, getting them the rock in their hot zones, that makes him a playmaking wizard. Melo's trust of his teammates is something all point guards should watch tape on, as not only does he cut through defenses with his high passing IQ, but 
It's how Ball constantly dishes out the rock with a purpose. On some passes that other attacking players make, it's obvious they're just passing it because they couldn't get it done themselves, whereas Melo's passes are preconceived and almost always well executed. Melo's currently number six among all players in total assists, but he's number three in the fewest turnovers committed among the top 10 ranked assist guys. Ball's lob throwing, his excellent instincts on whether to push the pace or slow it down, and his distance three-point shooting are all qualities that have made significant improvements in the second year of his career. A great sign for a young floor general. So, we've gone over the impact of Buzz City's number one guy from last year in Rogier, and just broke down the team's one-two punch. That would usually be enough firepower for most teams, but the Hornets have a different layer to their squad. Two off-season signings on the wing and in the front court have made a tremendous impact. Firstly, Kelly Oubre is coming off an injury-plagued, frankly, very rough season in Golden State, but GM and former Laker general manager in Mitch Kupchak picked up Oubre on a fairly cheap deal for his talent. He was signed to a two-year, $26 million contract, earning every penny of that. Not only has Oubre boosted his three-point efficiency by nine percentage points from last year in the Bay, but he only ranks a few spots behind the reputable OG Ananobi and star rookie Scotty Barnes in defensive rating among small forwards. Kelly's length on the perimeter, and like his teammate Bridges, his thunderous dunking ability, that's really improved the Hornets attack. The less talked about acquisition this summer was the addition of the beastly, springy, and strong Mason Plumley. Mason's had two brothers play in the league in Marshall and Miles, but the Hornets starting center is the last remaining Plumley bro in the NBA. Mason started in all 56 games he played in for Detroit in 2021 and posted a nice 10 points and 10 boards per game on 61% shooting. In 2020, Plum signed a three-year, $24 million deal with the Pistons, and he was traded to the Hornets on August 6th this past summer. So far in 16 games in Buzz City, he's proving to be one of this offseason's most underrated pickups as Mason's leading Charlotte in rebounding and shot blocking. Plumley won an NCAA championship at Duke. He was all rookie first team, and he's been one of our game's most underrated bigs for a few years now. The former NBA All-Star in Utah and now 31-year-old veteran Gordon Hayward has continued his exceptional shooting efficiency, which he's kept up over the last few seasons. Since returning from his tragic injury in 2018-19, during his time in Boston, the last three campaigns have seen Hayward shoot at least 47% from the field and at least 38% from three-point land. It's amazing to see that production after such a gruesome injury that scared every NBA fan less than half a decade ago. For Charlotte, the two-year legend of Butler University provides a much-needed veteran presence for this young group that is at times sporadic. But I really like this young Hornets team, and I think they're a legit playoff squad as I said. So why or why not are the Hornets a legit playoff team in your opinion? Best answer gets next video shout out. Community Speaks winner for today is Ronnie Smith, who says, I think this season will be important to determine who's the best player in the world for the next one to two seasons. LeBron's throne has been took. KD has made a great argument of why he's the best, and Giannis just had a historic finals. Pause to read the rest of that great take from Ronnie. The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. This was DFlow. Let's be friends. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops, and I'll see you next video.